welcome to this recorded service for Sunday the 6th of September. My name is Caroline and I'm one of the curates in the parish and I will be presiding at this service today. John Muggleton, one of our readers, will be preaching this morning and we are beginning a new sermon series looking at St Paul's letter to the church in Philippi and John will be preaching from that letter this morning. So as we come into the presence of God, consciously into his presence, let us pause at the beginning of this service together. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you are able and would like to, would you please stand to say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness, that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you. Through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please sit for our readings? Kat Schroeder will be reading to us this morning and then John Muggleton will be preaching. The first reading is taken from Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel, 
from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Our second reading, the Gospel reading, is taken from Luke chapter 6. One of these days, Jesus went out to the mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray that God would speak to us now as we consider these readings from his word. Come, Holy Spirit, open our ears that we may hear. Open our eyes that we may see. Open our hearts that we may receive. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a new term and we are starting a new sermon series, looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians. It's my favourite New Testament letter, so full of love and joy and hope. It was written by Saul of Tarsus, who had been the chief persecutor of the early church, a man who experienced a dramatic conversion on the road to Damascus and became known to history as the Apostle Paul, the greatest missionary evangelist in the history of the church. If you want a bit of background, you can read Paul's story in the book of Acts, starting at the end of chapter 7. Now, in AD 62, towards the end of his life, Paul is under house arrest in Rome, awaiting trial for his life before the Emperor Nero. And he writes to his friends in the church at Philippi. Paul had visited Philippi around AD 50 during his second missionary journey and started a church in dramatic circumstances. You can read the story in Acts 16. Over the years, Paul and the Philippians had kept in touch, and now, about 12 years later, he writes to encourage them to keep going in their faith. It's a letter of friendship and of joy. His love for the Philippians is obvious. As we study this letter together, I think that we will learn a lot about Christian friendship and, how, and also about how to live a fulfilled Christian life. In this passage, in chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, we see Paul giving thanks for his friends, encouraging his friends, and praying for his friends. So let's look at each of those aspects. Firstly, Paul gives thanks for his friends, verses 4 and 5. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Paul and the Philippians had worked together to spread the good news about Jesus and he, give thanks, he gives thanks for their partnership. So let me ask you, do you give thanks to God for your friends? Do you pray for them with joy? You know, there's a very special and close bond between people who have worked together in some form of Christian ministry. It might be an alpha team or a home group 
or a Sunday school group or youth group. It's good to take time to give thanks for those people, to thank God for them and their help. Secondly, Paul encourages his friends. In verse 6 he writes, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul wants to encourage them to keep going, not to get tired or disheartened, not to give up, because it is God who began the good work in each of their lives. And it is he who will continue the work, teaching, correcting, guiding, helping each of them to become more and more like Jesus, until the day we all stand before Jesus when he comes again. Paul also wants to encourage them by letting them know how much he loves and values them. In verses 7 and 8 he writes, It's right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. Let me ask you, do you encourage your friends? Do you let them know how much they mean to you? Everyone goes through tough times and everyone can do with some encouragement some reminder that you care for them, that you are praying for them. Thirdly, Paul prays for his friends. Do you pray for your friends? And if so, what sort of things do you pray for? Paul doesn't pray for their health or their wealth or for their protection from persecution. He prays that they will grow in their spiritual lives. He prays that they will grow in love. In verse 9 he says, that your love may abound more and more. He prays that they will grow in their love for God and in their love for one another. He prays that they will grow in knowledge. In verses 9 and 10 he says, to grow more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best that they will grow in their knowledge of God, their knowledge of his word, their knowledge of his will, that they will grow in wisdom and understanding so that they can make good choices and live lives that are pleasing to God. He prays that they will grow in holiness. Verses 10 and 11 he says, that they may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ Lives that are pure, blameless, righteous can be summed up in one word, holiness. Holiness is a misunderstood word. Some people think it describes a stuck-up, self-righteous prig who looks down his nose at sinners. But true holiness is a very attractive quality. It describes someone living in such a close communion with God that their whole being seems to radiate love, joy, hope and peace. Someone whose life causes other people to wonder if there might be a God after all. Someone who makes skeptics doubt their doubts. The author and broadcaster Malcolm Muggeridge used to be a well-known skeptic and agnostic. Late in life, he converted to Christianity. One of the people who influenced him greatly in his journey to faith was Mother Teresa of Calcutta. In 1969, he made a TV documentary about her, followed two years later by a book entitled Something Beautiful for God, which introduced her and her work to the Western world. In 1988, in his last book, Confessions of a 20th Century Pilgrim, he wrote this about her. When I first set eyes on her, I at once realized that I was in the presence of someone of unique quality, this was not due to her appearance, which is homely and unassuming, so that words like charm or charisma do not apply, nor to her shrewdness and quick understanding, though these are very marked, nor even to her manifest piety and true humility and ready laughter. There is a phrase in one of the Psalms that always, for me, evokes her presence. 
the beauty of holiness. That special beauty, amounting to a kind of pervasive luminosity, generated by a life dedicated wholly to loving God and his creation. This, I imagine, is what the halos in medieval paintings of saints were meant to convey. Paul's prayer for his friends in Philippi was that they would grow in love, in knowledge and in the beauty of holiness, that their lives would cause people around them to wonder if maybe there might be a God after all, that they would be people who make sceptics begin to doubt their doubts. And that is my prayer for each of you also, that your lives would cause people around you to wonder if maybe there might be a God after all. <clears throat> and as you pray for your friends, think about which of them you could invite on Alpha. Our Autumn Alpha courses start on Tuesday the 22nd and Wednesday the 23rd of September, meeting at 8.15 on Zoom. And you can find all the details on the website. So with that challenge, let us pray. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for the chance to think about Paul and the Philippians and think about uh, the challenges that he sets out for us as he prays for his friends, as he encourages his friends, as he gives thanks for his friends. Lord, help us to be good friends to those people around us, those people who we come in contact with. Help us to be good friends who pray for each other, who pray uh, that other people may come to know you. And so we commit each of us to you for this week ahead and these weeks ahead in this term. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, John. If you are able, would you please stand as we say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now we come to our intercessions. Would you please sit as Carol Hayden brings our intercessions this morning. Let us pray. The Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians tells us the way to go in imitation of Christ Jesus. His joy in Christ was grounded in Christ as was all of his life, Christ centred. May we follow Paul in concern for and love for the church, which was evidenced by his prayer and thanksgiving, so that we all share in God's grace. Lord God, keep your church holy and let us be an example to the world of justice, love and peace. As all on your precious and glorious world struggle in times of the coronavirus, we pray always for fair but strong government in our own and all countries. May they serve, not be served, and may they protect the weakest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we are thankful that we are included in your family through faith and that you love us equally, whatever our differences. Help us to offer ourselves to you each day with a cheerful heart, knowing that we belong to you and you are always in charge of all. Grant us wisdom 
to place prayer and praise as the focus of our lives, so that through our joy, your voice may be heard far and wide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your son Jesus prayed before he called his disciples, prayers which never ceased for them, loving and teaching them always. Thank you, Lord, for our friends. May we be a mutual support to each other, sharing our joys and sorrows, encouraging and, where we're able, guiding one another through our shared experiences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust, Lord God, to your care all children and students stepping onto fresh paths at this time. May you be their constant guide as each new chapter begins. And we pray for all who work in our schools and colleges. May they be blessed with enthusiasm and energy, wisdom and discernment as they face the challenges of the new academic year and the added worries of the COVID-19 ever-present threat. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer this prayer, Lord God, for those who are in need of your mercy, those with broken hearts and broken lives. Bless them with your healing grace. Radiate your healing power when hardships overwhelm their bodies. Comfort those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Fill them with gladness from above and hold them up with your divine strength. So in a moment of silence, we remember those known to us who are suffering. Grace and healing to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we meet with adversity, we praise God that he gives us strength and peace of mind to move forward with courage. We give thanks that no situation is too difficult for him to see us through. Now thank we all our God, because God is not hatred or jealousy or pride or anger or anything bad. Instead, God is love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Carol. And now we come to the peace. Wherever we are today, wherever you're watching this service, the Lord is with us. We would usually, if we were in church together, be shaking hands and giving each other a hug in the old days. But that's not possible just now. So after I have said the peace of the Lord be always with you and you have responded in the way that you wish, I would encourage you to sit quietly for a minute and just think about those people that you used to sit next to in church. Wish the peace of God and share it among your families and the friends that you have. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It is now time for our offertory and if you have been able to continue your giving during this season of lockdown we would like to really thank you for your continuing support of God's work in this parish and beyond. We understand that for some this has been a very difficult time financially 
And if we can help in any way, please contact us. We are praying for this town at this time as lockdown begins to ease. On the screen, there will be various ways that you can continue to give. And um, what I would encourage you to do is to consider this as part of your worship of God. We can only give God what he has given us in the first place. So thank you for whatever you are able to give at this time. This morning we will be using Eucharistic Prayer E. If you have a book with you, it is on page 7. So wherever we meet this morning, we know that the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Destro dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The service continues on page 11 with the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you.
Let us pray. God, our Creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At the top of page 12, we say together, Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There will be a series of notices on this recording at the end, so you'll be able to see what is going on in the parish. At the beginning of September, all sorts of things are starting again, and you will be able to see those um, at, um, notices just now. If you are able, would you please stand for the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those whom you love today and always. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen. I hope to see you very soon. God bless you and have a good day. Mm -hmm.